I don't want to give too much away. The last time we saw Leon, I was getting my head ripped off. Um, but, you know, we've established that there's some time travel and there's different timelines. Um, so, luckily, that gives an opportunity to bring Leon back. Um, and I, I do get to, I get to come back and, uh, and I don't miss a beat with my police work. And, uh, yeah, head back on. I, uh, I'm not going to say that I avoid the physical calamity this season, uh, but I do. And, uh, I just joined you. I don't, yeah. know. I don't even know what's happening, but I'm excited. We're, 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 we're having a fun show. show. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. great. So for the viewers at home, do you guys want to like introduce yourself say a little bit about your character? Do you see the moment on the show? Sure. This is Nate Mooney. He plays Leon Drinkwater, um, and a tall glass of water he is. <laughs> oh, and this is a vivacious Deborah Baker Jr., and she plays Denise Miller. Yeah. On Stand Against Evil, that you can watch season three, Halloween night. Halloween. Wednesdays. All Hallows Eve premiere, yeah. season three. Yeah. And you can binge watch seasons one and two on Hulu. So, what approach do you guys like to your characters first? Of all? Like, when you first maybe read the script, so read a little bit of it. Like, what attracted you? Well, number one, that I booked the job. Um, so, like, yeah, I'm doing this. Uh, honestly, it, it feels like Dana Gould and I knew each other already. Um, I truly, it's such a wonderful character to play. Um, I don't have to change my voice, and uh, it totally lends itself to it, but it feels like he knew me. The words come so effortlessly, and like the way it's written is my cadence and everything. Um, everyone's always like, so great he wrote that role for you. It's like, oh no, I auditioned many times. I fought people for this role. <laughs> I want to say I had a straight offer. But oh, no, I did. didn't know. It was, um, I know that, like, you know, Dana has just such an encyclopedic memory of old, like, Andy Griffith's show and, uh, the, uh, what's the, uh, the Ghost and Mr. Chicken, uh, Don Knotts. Obviously, I'm a twist on it. I don't think Dana was running around with unicorn dresses, but maybe he was. I don't know. <laughs> Home videos, can't wait. Um, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's, we're clearly the silliest characters on the show, and I think that, really all the characters, but especially us, we're really, we're outlined in bold strokes, and, uh, and so that is very, it's nice to have that kind of uh, anchor, to know that, like, it's really clear how goofy we are, it's really clear that we have uh, unconventional desires and uh, and that's easy to step into there's not a lot of gray uh, and then you know as that was said it is we do a lot of work on set because we, we do find new things on the day and uh, and that keeps it fresh for us but you have to you know, kind of just tap into the limitless possibilities of these two characters yeah and we do so much you know so we do everything on the page but Dana really encourages us to because we're all so strong in the comedy world. So like, please, like, if you have like another like weird button or you know something, do it. So you can really get freaky on the show. <laughs> like, I can really go for it. <laughs> it sounds like everybody has like really interesting chemistry. Yeah. Too, so like, is there any like memorable moments that you guys can recall? Like maybe like one of your favorite times. Well, I made Nate be my best friend when we go to Atlanta, much to his chagrin. Um, I'm constantly like knocking on his door, like, let's go for a bike ride, let's go get ice cream, um, let's be friends forever. Uh, so yeah, a lot we, more ice cream than bike rides, <laughs> yeah, I have true. to admit that. That's 100 percent true. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like summer camp, so when you shoot somewhere else that's not your home, you're not going home and like doing your own thing, you're like going back and being like, all right. I don't have any other friends here. I hope I like my cast, which we're so fortunate to have because we get to go on so many adventures. And like, I truly have done more things in Atlanta than some of the crew who's lived there their whole life. I'm like, they're like, like, you've done so much. And I'm like, it's a great city. Um, so every weekends are adventures and days off are adventures. And I think it just makes our work that much more rich on set because we truly do have a real friendship. I'd say this year, um, we all shot in a, a 
antique shop, and so a lot of people got to buy things. I didn't. The woman made fun of my voice. Um, so then I immediately put the thing I was going to buy back in protest. She was like, oh, that's your real voice. And I was like, oh, that's your real voice. <laughs> Why would you say that to someone? Um, We've shot in an antique shop every season, have we so far? Have you bought something in, in every one of those antique shops? I've never bought anything. Because I've learned my lesson this year, uh, David Gould, uh, Purchase something from the antique shop, only to later discover that it was actually props, and that we had shady woman, shady woman. Yeah, the same woman who criticized her voice. Uh, yeah, 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 ten dollars. Sold us our props back then. I think my, I, you know, I, I always get very excited about the lightning in Atlanta because we never see that here. But t this year it was particular on set. This is an actual uh, shooting uh, anecdote I can give. It's, for the first time, I've had, uh, John actually yelled at me. I don't think he's really, truly, like, in character. We were doing an improv, and it was a great, it was a lot of fun to have, uh, to all of a sudden hear his voice uh, snap at me from off camera uh, during that little impro improvisation. And this is the third season. He's been kind of hard on Leon, but he's never really snapped at me. And it was just fun to be on the receiving end of one of John's verbal smackdown. So, in that verbal smackdown, that's your lightning, or are you actually talking about? No, I was lightning physically storms, talking about lightning. lightning storms were also very terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, because uh, Atlanta gets kind of like a tropical weather system, so it really. Uh, we lost a whole day, and we don't have that many days, and we lost a whole day because of lightning. Um, it's really gnarly. Yeah, and that pushes everything back. Right? Totally. Like, yeah. How long does it take you guys to film like once a year? We Four did weeks. It, we did it in 24 days. Wow. Wow. Monday through Friday, we get Saturday and Sunday off. Thank God. <laughs> and um, yeah. Really Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I think the limited amount of time we have and the limited takes that we get kind of forces us, what you were describing before, kind of our playfulness and our chemistry, um, anything that Dana might be thinking on the day that he wants to suggest. You can't be precious, you got to put it out there right away, because you only might, you only might have two takes or even one take, and you're moving on. Um, so it's not something you can sit back and kind of pick apart your own brain before you share it with the rest of the cast. You've got to kind of just throw it out there, and uh, and if it's good, you'll, you'll, you'll know. You'll know by your castmates, by the rest of the crew, uh, and that makes it a lot easier to move on to the next shot, thinking that you might have just got something special. I tell Nate when um, he's not doing well, though. I just whisper it in the like, oh, can't do it again, so. And if, she's, yeah. and if she's not close enough to whisper, she stands behind the monitors and just like, waves. Uh, you know, I think we have a lot of challenges on this show. It's between the lightning, the short days, and then trains. If you watch our show and you want to find some Easter eggs, we have a fucking train situation in every single scene. I don't know what the locations person is thinking, but we seriously sometimes have to wait for trains. Just, why is a train 30 minutes long? I don't know, but we know we have to wait for it, and it's it's crazy. This year for seasons like Rap Gifts, um, Dana and our director, um, Rob Cullen, gave everybody a pass. It was just like a train, and it just said, stand at the table. It truly is. Um, I would always say, here comes 33 on the call sheet. Late again. Yeah. yeah. We're going to have to really do like a Stand By Me episode. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> trains, man. Who's, who's going to be the one who d uh, dives? <laughs> Probably me. <laughs> So many things. So many things. So we shoot everything on location. So we don't have a studio like all those fancy marble people in Atlanta. No, we are in the dirt. We're, there's critter people like pulling snakes out and like got yeah, two of them. And I'm like only two. I feel like maybe you should go back to one more snake. Um, people are constantly getting like bugs. I I throw so many chemicals all over myself. Um, we are in houses that we are in one house that was like lopsided, so you felt like you were having vertigo inside of it. Because I'm pretty sure, like we put one more person in, it was gonna like cave in. Um, oh, so many. Yeah, it's easy things. to get a location when it's abandoned. <laughs> <laughs>